subscriber count. I see it. Tick, 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 tick. No, they're going to like this. You can put this on a separate video. You may want to make this a video by itself. Dollar Tree on a date night. Oh, and a foot. What'd you say? This poor fella needs a sandwich. <laughs> and a foot. I spy Christmas soap. Santa. Look at that. Oh, these are pretty. All kinds of trucks. You don't watch my videos, do you? <laughs> I do some. I talked about this. Selectively. <laughs> I'm just picking on you. What'd you get? Ah, uh, airheads. I should have known. What's that supposed to be? <laughs> you airhead. No, I just know you like them. Some wild berry Skittles. Find something Audrey can eat. Something that's not chewy. Most of it appears to be chewy. Put candy corn. Ugh. <laughs> Kool Aid popping candy. Are those in little Where? Snack size. Oh, yeah, they are. <clears throat> she can do that. Let's let me pull up the questions here. <laughs> I get to choose what we answer. You going to answer that first one? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. What does it say? It says, what's your favorite thing to do on date night? Go to bed early. <laughs> Shasta, what did I tell you? Her husband answered the, a similar question. Yes, exactly like Shasta. I knew, exactly like I knew you would. I'm, we're tired. We're tired. And what's the use, anyways, for anything else? <laughs> you ain't got one in there. <laughs> That's funny, because I told her that his answer was exactly something like you. He, we well, didn't answer. He kind of looked at her and was like, "Can we say that on YouTube?" I like to go to sleep after the stuff. Oh me. Moving on. Do you have? A favorite song from dating or now? Uh, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy oh was a good song when we were in high school. Pregnancy Brain's a real thing. What? Uh, it was an Aerosmith song. Was it Don't Want to Miss a Thing? Is that what? He made a CD when you asked me to marry oh, you. Oh, don't, don't say that. He did. He, so you know, like when you'd like burn that. a CD and put special songs on it, oh, and it was playing when he asked me to marry him. Is that is that what it was? No, my brain can't you're, think. No, you're thinking. Um, no, my brain is not working right now. And then we played it at our I wedding. Have, I don't have a brain anymore. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. We played it before anything. Like they were supposed to light the candles it to was, it, and they walked in at the wrong time. It was. Um, no, it wasn't Aerosmith. It was, um, for some reason I want to say Brian Adams, but I don't think that's right either. 
Apparently neither of us can <laughs> <laughs> You know how long we've been married? 15 years. I don't remember last year. Look at me I like got that. pregnancy brain though. I Mine don't that. work right. Mine don't work right ever. I've got. Well, there not. was a song. It was special. <laughs> it was special. It, he played it when he asked me to marry him. Though he played it at our wedding. It what? Well, I'd have to look it up. It's uh, your biggest fan. It is in it. it. That's not the name of it. Uh, I'll be your crying shoulder. It's just, it's I'll be right. Yeah, that may be it. What about now? Mm. I don't know. We got kids around too much for lovey songs. We're listening to Bluey and Mickey Mouse. Well, I mean, I like to listen to Amazon music in the kitchen when I'm cooking or cleaning. And there's so many different kinds of songs on there. You never know what's going to come up next. Uh, you never know. <laughs> you never know. It'll be a song that's got you crying, singing about Jesus, and the next one will be Low by Tim <laughs> Payne. Was it a gift? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, I gotta read this whole thing. Oh, I, I gotta say it in the. You gotta like, read I gotta it like read it like. I love your cross necklace. Was it a gift? And where did you get it? We've, I did not give it to you. We've been teaching our kids about <laughs> how you. Uh, Speak, depending on the punctuation of the sentence. That was a good job. Thank you. That was a good job. Thank and thank As you. As you can tell, the way I speak, my speech is very eloquent. It is. It is. This was a gift, and it was from a sweet lady at church. You don't know who that's from? Yes, I do. It was from Miss Annette. It's your secret pal. No, it was for Christmas for Miss Annette. Oh. I don't know nothing. Uh, so this, each of us is supposed to comment on this. What was your first thought about each other? Oh boy. Yeah, let's do this one. <laughs> I thought she was crazy. Look, she... And F finish it out, finish it out. The first time you laid... Okay, what was your first thought about each other? That's one part. The first time you laid eyes on each other. I, she was a crazy. He ran sister. from me. She was the notes. Now we were in middle school. I was not. I, I, I was, in, was in middle school, so I was too cool to be dating a middle schooler, anyways. So the he notes, ran. guys. She it would be another day. I was, I was persistent. She wouldn't quit. I was persistent. I finally said, "Fine." Look where it got us. Hmm. Shouldn't have quit running. So I think that's pretty obvious. The first time I laid eyes on him, I thought he was the greatest thing. No, she did not. And he, he was running from me. No. no, no. Too cool for the middle schooler. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I did. She wrote a lot of notes. I didn't read most of them. I finally read one. And here we are. It may have been the last one she ever wrote me. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, I don't know. She's a good-looking kid. <laughs> you know, I, the reason that I started talking to her was of my brother, who was an 11th grader when I was a 9th grader. Because that's when we started dating when I was going into 10th grade. The summer of my 10th grade year. So I was seventh grade. Going and she would have been grade. going into eighth grade. And my brother and one of his friends that we would run around and rabbit hunt and stuff with used some words to talk me into dating her. Oh, <laughs> oh man. It wasn't bad, but they encouraged me. So really, you can thank them. Well, you. Y'all don't want to see me doing this, so this is a question for her. Will you be doing a Christmas shop with me and Christmas present haul for your family? We might. Last year, I thought about doing that last year, but we um, had all the presents wrapped before I really thought about thought about it again. 
because we did it a little different last year. We let the kids sit down with us and wrap each other's gifts, right. which was fun. I enjoyed that. But they were all wrapped like three weeks before Christmas. Yeah, we like, were wait, done. Yeah. We were done last year quicker than I think we've ever been. Mm -hmm. Wrapped. There was no like staying up late on no. it was Christmas Eve fantastic. wrapping gifts. So before I thought about it last year, everything was already wrapped up. And I'm like, I ain't unwrapping it. Yeah, it was Maybe fun. we'll do that this year. We'll see. You better get the camera out three weeks early because I ain't staying up the night before. He's like, we're doing that again. It's just... It did work out good. I don't know. We got we got one who is past the threshold, and I think we'll probably have another that passes that threshold pretty soon. The seven-year-old, and then the baby, he won't know no different. But, or the, you know, the 18-month-old won't know no different. This baby could be here for Christmas. No. It may be here the week after Christmas. Probably. I don't think it'll be here for Christmas. I don't know if we go to the hospital on Christmas Day. But even then, our <sighs> kids only ask Santa for one gift. Look. Alright, earmuffs. For youngins. Clip them on. The fat guy gets way too much credit. He does. And I was about tired of it. Me too. So... So, that don't happen no more. No. I just liked having it done before the night before. <laughs> oh, it was so uh, nice. So just nice. Just ready to go out. Uh, what would be each... Well, I mean, you could do a present haul after they open the presents. Yeah. Even if you didn't... Even if you didn't do something before. Yeah. Let the kids describe mm -hmm. them. That would Them's be pretty mom. funny. <laughs> yeah. Listening to her describe what he wants... He ends up getting that. Uh, what would be each of your advice to young couples starting out in a marriage? Tiffany for the young women and me for the young men and then together. You see, I, I, I don't know because... Okay, so we talked a minute ago about how I ran. But we were kids. Um... But by the time, you know, I got out of high school, I, I just think we were meant to be together. Um, first off, you better make sure that you love God. It's probably and both. That's, that's something we'd both say. Where, I both and both you're both where both. you're supposed to be with your relationship with Jesus. Because when you make commitments during your wedding, you are making a commitment to your wife and to God. So there's days, I'm sure, probably more for her than me, uh, I'm sure more for her than me, that some days you're just like, I promised God that I would love this person. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> one's never right and one's never wrong. The, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Um, and if you live in that world and right and wrong, then, you know, that's going to be a hard place to find a balance. Um, and for men, learn what is and isn't worth dying for. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff that just, in the grand scheme of things, um, I'm doing cats all over this new sofa. Cats ain't supposed to be on this couch. But the kids ain't here and they don't know what the crap to do. <laughs> yeah, when the kids aren't here, they're like... They're lost. Especially give us the, attention. Especially the girl cat. She loves Audrey. Uh... There's stuff that's important to stand for. There's stuff you don't move on. Um, and then the rest of it is is just... I mean, it's, it's not worth it to be right all the time. Um, but the biggest thing is you better know where you stand and, and you better know you're secure in your faith. And, um, and it's hard, and I would say this too, to, to both... Um, you know, it, it is hard to uh, go into a relationship and think that you're going to change somebody. It's like trying to pull somebody up off the edge of a cliff. It's much easier for them to pull you over than it is to pull people up, um, especially for women. Um, find you a man that loves Jesus more than they love you uh, because... You know, it's it's hard 
for women to be leaders of the household and you think, well, I can change him. Um, uh, that's a hard road to start now. There's enough problems in marriage um, that you'll come across for that not to be settled, I would think. God, spouse, children, there's a time that we, I don't know that we had that right. No, and that's my fault. Um, and, men, um, you will answer. Uh, if you, and I, and I know there's probably all types of uh, beliefs that watch this channel but if you claim to be a Christian like we do uh, men you are going to answer for your wife and your children's spiritual well-being one day uh, she ain't gonna answer for yours but you will answer for them uh, Christ is the head of the church you're the head of the family and that's just the way it's set up and the way it's supposed to work and you will answer for that so and there was a time in our marriage and in our lives where I would not have answered well for that. And that's just the truth. And it was, those were, were I, I mean, we wouldn't, we've never fought much at all, ever. Things weren't like they were supposed to be back then. And, and that's the reason. It's because stuff wasn't where it was supposed to be. Uh, what are your favorite family that's uh, we'll bill y'all for the therapy hours. What are your favorite family activities? What are your favorite ways to spend your spare time? Uh, we, we actually laughed about this a while ago. Spare time, what's that? Is that what you get in bowling? It's spare time. Uh, no, like, like Tiff said, I mean, we don't, we're doing football right now. HUD's kind of begging to play. We were literally talking about this just uh, a little bit ago. You know, so we've got a lot more fall. Um, you know, we've you know we've looked at some fall ball baseball stuff, and, the, and like I said, Hud's kind of he he thinks he really wants to play football. They're <laughs> giving it a try, but we haven't played football. This is our second year of no football or twirl or whatever cheer on Saturdays. Um, I love for our kids to do those things, but it sure yeah. is nice. Yeah. To have our weekends like we went last and weekend all, and, to the and, river. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll say this. I, I would, and they're not playing because we told them they couldn't No, play. no. Um, if they wanted to play, that's fine. Uh, I was never told no. Um, when I was young and, and my divorced mother got me to where we needed to be for everything we wanted to do. So it would really be selfish of, of me to tell them no. But uh, Easton decided he, just, he was going to play basketball and baseball and that's fun um you know if hud wants to try football but saying all that to say this we've had a little extra time and um, they like having that extra time like yeah. they enjoyed us going to the river and right. going fishing and yeah and, and that's one thing you know fishing it and everything like that you saw us <laughs> what you didn't see in the river video is, is the struggle of the baby and trying to keep him from drowning and uh, <laughs> running off in the he river wasn't and, that bad he um, did want in the water though you know he wanted to splash uh, and he loves the water he loves bath time he loves swimming and yeah, ooh, there was loves, water she can't yeah, take care of him for a second water. um but you know we like to fish we like to hunt when we can um we like to go to the movies, mm -hmm. too. Uh, we were actually talking about the Avatar movie coming out again in theaters. The one in Coleman, unfortunately, have doesn't it. have it. But um, no, we like to do that. We don't do it all, you know, every weekend we don't go no, see something. But, no, you know, when but something the kids want to see come out or a fun we've little We've taken the baby out. to the movies. Yeah. Um, I'm talking little, little bitty baby taking him to the movies. It's probably easier then than it would be now. Right. He yeah. slept through all of yeah, he it. He slept through all of it. Um, we play uh, board games. Mm -hmm. Kids like to play Clue and uh, the boys. Easton got life a while back. Um, and it is, uh, people make fun of that game, but it was a pretty fun little game. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't have no friends at the end. <laughs> I didn't realize, I, I don't think I've ever played till we played it. And I didn't realize friends at the end meant you got more money. He'll have friends next time. I didn't have no friends. I was like, I'm getting through this life. And I don't want no friends. That was a mistake. Park outside. There's not good lighting in here. We have the glow of the mm -hmm. yellow 
Glory. I am not. I know you have said before you was a teacher. What gray and what made you decide to stay home? Was it to raise your kiddos and school them at home? If so, I so respect you for that. So, oh, that's a long, it's a long one. one. Uh, so answer that one first. Um, what did you teach and why did you stop? I taught pre-K four, and I did love it. I enjoyed it, but God had other plans. And I was actually working at a private school doing accounting work when the dreaded C word hit. And just the way things played out, the um, older two were in school at the time. And I taught pre-K. I went there. I was just there for a year, right? Mm -mm, two years. You were there a year before HUD started, and then you were there when HUD started. Yeah, but at the private school. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then um, we were just so uncertain about the way things were going. and. Well, and, too, I mean, they were going to, you know, they, they you didn't know what they were going to do with the kids. Yeah. It got to where if your kids sneezed from, for any reason, they sent them home. Yeah. Um, so it was, they were not going to be leaving their classrooms to go. They didn't even go to the lunchroom much. They didn't go to PE much. I mean, we just didn't like that. Turning it into a prison. For, and I had always wanted to homeschool anyway. When before Audrey started school, I wanted to homeschool her. And Justin was like, "No, I think she needs to go to school." And so, uh, and I didn't really push it then. But when all this came about, it was like my chance. Yeah, and, that, and after like, they, look, and after God they, has made well, a way, <laughs> and then you know we went through the summer and we and we didn't decide to homeschool them right away, um, which we still had HUD who did, he wasn't ready. He wasn't, so he would have been going then, into kindergarten the next fall. Mm -hmm. That's right, and so he so the more they talked about it through the summer, that's when they started talking about they were going to be in their rooms all day, they weren't going to lunch, and so Hudson's first experience with school would have been in a prison um, Easton would have the way he was with school um, you know in the struggle we had you know he always had good days when he got to school and got settled down but you know the struggles with getting him to school in the mornings um, he would not have dealt with that well that year and um, you know it, it would have just been awful and, uh, and Easton that, did it, not I don't know if we've ever talked about that but Easton did not do well at drop off, mm -hmm. um, did not do well at <laughs> all. Oh, it was bad. It, it was just that anxiety of getting out of the car at drop off, and that separation at, at car drop off. That was just, uh, it was bad. That's not. That's not even a <laughs> good enough word. Um, yeah, it, it was. Homeschooling else. has been a blessing, though. And I love it. Like I said, I always wanted to anyway. Uh, Jessica K., this is so nice, I'll read it. Um, not a question, but she just said, I just wanted to tell you I watch a lot of people on YouTube, and you and your family are by far my Aww. favorite family. Uh, your values and beliefs in the Lord are what draws me to you. And I've learned so much this year about canning and gardening from you. Uh, yeah, learning about how to fumble your way through it. She's, we do the best we can. She's good at it. I, on the other hand, not good at it. Uh, I love your family. Pray every day. God bless you, y'all, because you deserve the best. That is so You're kind. You're good, folks. Thank uh, you. Ah, we're decent. That was sweet. I know you were high school sweethearts, um, but how did you and Justin meet and get together? We kind of talked about that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. She chased me until I finally stopped. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we met in school, I, and, and it is funny, and I, and I don't mean it in an ugly way. I, I really didn't know who she was. She was in a different building. You were in a totally different building. But I knew who you were. <laughs> well, I, that's that's not how guys work. Blows you know, my mind around. is to think that I was Audrey's age. <laughs> Look out. Jody, that's very nice. No questions, but I just wanted to say that you are... A glowing mama. Well, thank you. I want to go get that scene about. 
I don't feel like it some days. Oh, she's always been very pretty pregnant. She's very pretty when she ain't. She don't have to be pregnant to be pretty. You, it's like you think you have to be pregnant. I mean, there's some things that are pretty nice. <laughs> What is each of your testimony and when did you incorporate a ministry into your lives together? Uh, I don't know that we've ever... I think somebody else asked her. I think I saw about well, when did we get saved. So I guess those go together. I was actually... Uh, I think it was 97. Uh, 96 or 97. So I, I was actually... Somewhere around 10 or 11. So I got saved at a young age. Um, I got saved the same years. 96 or 97. Quit copying me. <laughs> well, um, I was younger than you, but. Yeah, you were younger than me. There are, I am I mean, everybody's salvation story is, is special because it's theirs. Um, but, you know, some are a lot more. Uh, you know, impactful just because of the situations they come out of. Um, but each each one is just as impactful in your own personal life as uh, anybody else's is in theirs. I mean, because it's the day that, you know, you got freed um, and started a new life. But after that, you know, I, I was a pretty good kid. Um, no big thing for me. I've uh, never done drugs, never been drunk. Um, so how old were you, 10? About 10 or 11. I was in the 6th grade, I remember that. Going into 6th grade. So that wouldn't have no, been... No, that would have been 10. That was probably 11. That, yeah. But that wouldn't have been 96, 90... It may have been 97. I think it was 97. There's a video of it somewhere of us getting baptized. And I actually got saved the same time my brother did. Um, same day. Um, him and mom were down in the altar praying and something just made me get out and go down there with them um so and then you know after that you kind of live you kind of um you know like, like we talked about a little earlier it, it we waned um and i will always take fault for this um we we spent a couple of years where we were not regular visitors to churches we were on a church roll but you know, we hardly ever went to that one. We would go to some that family went to. Um, and then uh, we decided to join back up to the church that I actually got saved in. And then in 2000 and... I'm horrible with dates. 16, I think. Um, I felt that uh, there was more to do for me and kind of answered the call to preach. Uh, have not ever the next question actually talks a little bit about this so uh, haven't ever really felt the pull yet to be a pastor um, there is a difference between a preacher and a pastor um, we do a lot and we've actually done a lot over the summer of guest preaching um, at different places so we've been called to that since 2016 and uh, enjoy it and if you know we, we get the call or the, the pull to pastor somewhere and and that happens one day and we're not against that um but you know whatever god's plans are at this time then we're where we're at and we'll see where we go from here if you wanted a moving uh testimony i, I mine's kind of bland but wrong with it, it is what it is uh and you know everybody's testimony is important because it's theirs and every testimony is life changing for that person so I was in first grade I was seven just turned seven I think when I got saved it's the end of my first well I guess like Christmas ish my first grade year and I think I you know, been seven in first grade yeah because I turned six in kindergarten Oh, yeah, I guess you were, because you were in middle. Yeah. But one That's of my that. best friends had passed away that year. She was the same age as I was. And 
I was brought up in church. I you know, heard the story, but I think that really opened my eyes to just death and uh, being being ready whenever your time was. And God spoke to my heart and was saved at a young age. And then talking about like his call to preach, that's one of those things y'all where it's kind of, like I still like. It amazes me when I think about it and how God just clearly speaks to you about things. God was telling me that he was going to call him to preach. The same time he was talking to him, telling him he was <laughs> going to preach. And I remember Justin saying, is there something you've been thinking about? Is there something that's been on your mind? And he'd be like, yes. Yes, there has. It's just amazing how God does those things, works them out. So the next question actually says, uh, you make a beautiful couple, a wonderful family. Um, and then it asks you if I'm a pastor. Uh, and then you're very kind, Rita. Um, Rita. It reminds me of Bl That's Bluey. Bluey. <laughs> uh, what little preaching I heard from you. That's all we blog. think about. <laughs> hey, Bluey's not a bad show. No, it's if not. he was, it would sure be nice to attend y'all's church. If I live there, hope you have a great, that's very kind. Uh, great date night, and God bless you from Georgia. Hello, neighbor. Yeah. Uh, I did, I, did I know I used to work in Georgia? I don't time? know. He used, I used to, to work travel in to Georgia. Georgia every week and work yeah. uh, Monday through Thursday. He did. He'd go to, he'd go to Georgia and work <laughs> and come home on the weekends. Yeah. So y'all didn't know how much of a rock star she really was. Because she dealt with the home and the kids and everything else while I was gone all the time. And graduated from college during that span. Mm -hmm. So... Y'all don't know nothing about her. <laughs> uh, no, we like like we said, there I is a difference. I think I got something right here, but it says broken blind. Uh, <laughs> Stinking kids. Um, as I said earlier, there is a difference between a pastor and a preacher. Um, a pastor is someone who shepherds a church. A, a pastor is a much deeper position than just a preacher. Uh, and, and that's all we are doing right now is... Um, We've gone and, helped, busy preaching. and helped a lot of, well, I think we got something the next, no, I, I don't have. Watch it. Whoa, fight. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. Well, you better knock them, get off this couch. Go, don't scratch go, the couch. Go. I think You're in May. somewhere at least two to three Sundays. I think in May, morning. we preached every Sunday in May except one. We preached a lot of Sundays in June. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, invitations, and it's fun to do that. I, I enjoy that. Uh, we preach at our home church. Um, about one Sunday a month, um, if, even if we weren't going to other places, it's 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 it's. An, I enjoy going and, and helping people, um, and and just visiting. And you know, some churches the, the pastors go on vacations and they need somebody, or um, they're looking for a, a pastor at the time and just need somebody to fill. Uh, and it's good to go and be able to help. So, uh, as far as pastoring a church, no, not at this time. Um, but like I said, who knows? I keep looking at the phone reading questions and I feel like I should be looking at them. Um, how do y'all cope with the busyness of life? What do y'all do as a married couple without the kids? Do y'all pray together? Um, probably not as much as we need to on that last one. Um, there's always room for growth. Um, how do y'all cope with the busyness, busyness of life? Sometimes not well. No, <laughs> uh, it can no, be overwhelming. You know, yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. lot, that's real life. It can be overwhelming. You know, and that's the thing. If, if it gets to a point where you can't, if if life just kind of consumes you, you got to look at what you're doing and, and see if there's anything mm -hmm. that can change, uh, anything that's not necessary, um, and just kind of go with that. Um, but I mean, but you got a, you got four kids, one on the way. I mean, that's what you signed up for. It's gonna be busy. <laughs> so we we sit down. I, I think one good thing that we try to do. Uh, some days my work doesn't allow me to get here uh, on time to do it as, as much as I would like. But um, whenever we can, we do sit down at the table at the end of the day. That has always been dinner. very important to me. Very um, important to me. And that's just a, a time to settle and be around and we laugh and, um, you know, we eat. And the kids come up with some questions and we just talk about their days. Um, ask them how school went for everybody and what they got coming up the next couple of days and uh, 
you know, that, that's a good thing to do, I think, every day. No matter um, how busy life is, you can you can always do that. Right. Um, what do we do as a married couple without kids? We don't do much without Probably kids. Probably the same thing every married couple does without kids. Um, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, we don't. There's well, not many times where there's no. not a kid here. Ah. Yeah. Quit. Don't you scratch that piano? Um, and when the kids ain't here, you got the cat, so... <laughs> we, we usually always have at least the littlest one with us, but not tonight. Well, I mean, Mama he's, he's over a year on. old. He, yeah. He, he gets around pretty good now. You this know, will be the second afraid. night he's been You're away. not afraid you're going to drop him at this age, and even if you do, they'll bounce. Uh, we like I to know. go out to eat. Yeah, just go out to eat. We went Hang out and ate tonight, and we talked, and <clears throat> just good to be alone every once in a while talk about the kids when they're not with us and then yeah. we just constantly talk about <coughs> things they like things they said things they do <coughs> can't be without them without wanting them to be there yeah you think you're gonna be excited about not being there and then you end up missing the fart heads <laughs> great picture of y'all thank you she always takes very good pictures and i always take very bad pictures he so. takes good pictures um What's one Bible verse y'all live by? Uh, what's your favorite thing about each of the kids? And what is your favorite Christian movie? That's good questions. Um, so let's start from the bottom. What is our favorite Christian movie? Um, I don't know. There's some good ones. The Passion is probably the most moving yeah. uh, Christian movie that I've seen. You know, that that's that one really kind of is, is the most moving. It really gives you a picture. I, I really like The Chosen, the TV show. That's one thing that I wish I'd had more time to do. Uh, by the time we get home and get settled, it's about bedtime. I do like The Chosen, though. That That's pretty good. I, you know, the what I've watched up to it is, is very good. What's your favorite thing about each other, eight, not each other, <laughs> each of the kids. Try again. Each of the kids. <laughs> Read that um, one again. So Audrey is just, she's just a, a her heart oh, probably. Gosh, y'all. She you is the sweetest You can't thing. get on to the kid. She'll just break It has down. always been that way. Um, I mean, she even thought she was in trouble. She was you didn't have to get on to her because she was hard enough, hard enough on herself. Right. Bless her heart. Um, Would do anything for anybody. Uh, Easton, I, I like his humor. He's a funny kid. And it's a different kind. Like it's not. No, it's, it's just. It's just. Uh, it, it's really. He's just a. He's just a funny kid. He's, without trying yeah, to be. Yeah, without trying to be. Uh, just a. It's kind of a smart type of humor. Um, Huddy is, is just, he's thoughtful. They they all are really thoughtful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like they were out buying shoes today and Easton didn't want to go look at other shoes because he found some that was cheaper that would do just as good. But he's always wanted a pair of Hey Dudes. But he didn't want but us to have to pay for them. They were too, he thought they were too expensive. Um, but he got the Hey Dudes. He did. Um, and Huddy, he just, the things he thinks of, in his little he brain. sees things in different circumstances that I wouldn't see. Yeah. Like he notices the little things. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and why you're learning something new about him all the time. He's, he's developing, developing his personality. A little attitude. And yeah, he's got a little bit of red getting, hair on that head. He's getting pretty fun. Uh, he has gotten to where he will grab things and run. And he gets moved real fast. Laugh when you chase him. <laughs> uh, so you know that's starting to be pretty fun about him. What's one Bible verse y'all live by? I don't know. I'd have to think about that yeah. one. Um, I, the the First Corinthians about love and love conquering a multitude of sins. You know that's a that's a good one um, to to live your marriage out through. Uh, is is understanding how powerful love is, um, you know, not only your love for each other, but God's love for you. 
I have favorite Bible verses, but like as far as one to live by. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and if, <laughs> a good one for all the Christians out there that are practicing Christians. Um, you know, you can look where, where Jesus is, is telling them that the world will hate you. Uh, not because of you, but because it hated him. Um, but he also finished that off by, by saying, fear not. Uh, for he has conquered the world. So fear not is is scattered throughout the New Testament, and that's just a, a pretty good mantra to take um, about your life. And and if you know Christ and if you've given your life to Christ, then there's no really reason to fear. There's a picture. Where's is that? That picture of us at the beach. Mm -hmm. Everybody, there's been multiple multiple of y'all say it, a great picture. Um, that's where we're at the beach. This lady says you are glowing a lot lately. Uh, Thank you. Uh, once again, you need to get that checked on. Uh, your favorite thing to do as a family? What's your favorite takeout food? Uh, that's a pretty good one. That's a good one. Um, we usually go to Sonic when it's all of us. That's yeah, kind of become Sonic like our, our takeout um, fast food, if you will, kind of thing. You know, Taco Bell when they got Mexican pizzas. Lord help when they don't have them. We don't like you, Taco Bell, and you don't have Mexican pizzas. Um, They'll bring something back and then not have enough. Right. Yeah. They did that on purpose. It's the Chick-fil-A. Popeye's saying again. We're going to run out. Everybody goes We better say it. Jack's. Hmm? We better say Jack's. Nah, Jack's. <laughs> Jack's has got a Wickles pickle burger. That's good. Yeah, you have to uh, buy some Jack's. I have that. <laughs> uh, no, Jack's has good. I like Jack's chicken. Uh, you know, I go. That's... I get that a lot when we go there's there. There's a lot of people that say that they like Jack's, and then there's people like, we don't have Jack's here. Uh, he works well, for Jack's, by in, the way, if you didn't Well, know. that's what the next question is. If you, live oh, in the, yeah. if you live in the South, just hang on. We're expanding. Uh, if you live outside the South, uh, maybe a couple years. Um, South Georgia. So go eat uh, Jack's. Yeah, South Georgia. Coming your way. Warner Robins, Hawkinsville, Monticello. Uh, Gray, uh, Barnesville, you know, we're growing down in South Georgia, North Georgia a lot too, uh, Memphis area, Chattanooga, there's a lot of places in Chattanooga. Pretty soon they'll be all over the South. Yeah, we're trying. What kind of work does Justin do? Um, I am the senior IT manager for Jack's Family Restaurants. Um, I oversee, we have, you know, we, we service all the IT for all stores. We have 225 locations. People have asked me this As before, right what now. you do, and I'm like, I could try to tell you, but let's just uh, let him. I don't, I don't. Well, I don't do much of anything anymore. I started out as a field tech for Jack's. He, field, don't, he does. Field manager He works for a lot. He works all the time when he's home, um, he works. He does a lot. And now I've moved up into more of a, a senior management role with the department. We service the full service IT department that is actually employed by JAX. Um, we in-house the majority of our IT stuff. Um, so we have a phone center that answers phones. We have a field team that goes out to the restaurants and services the restaurants uh, IT. And then we have a project team that installs new restaurant locations and does, uh, uh, you know, like big company spanning projects. And uh, I kind of oversee all of that. Um, and just, uh, yeah, just make sure everybody He else doesn't give himself enough done. credit. I'm very proud of him and what he does and how he's gotten to where he is. That's what I do. I'm in IT. That's a simple answer. <laughs> it's a simple answer to a very complicated question. What is my favorite meal to cook? Breakfast. Breakfast and steaks. You can grill them. We don't have a grill right now. Just got the porch done. We got no grill. We still gotta get a grill. Uh, breakfast, I would say. I like to cook breakfast. I like to gotten to where we do omelets some now. We got um, so many eggs, we gotta use them. We've got a ton of eggs. Um, 
So we, we like breakfast. I like to cook breakfast. I like and Audrey usually so handles. What's, what's your favorite meal, Justin? What's Justin's favorite meal you cook? So what's your favorite meal I cook? Oh, I thought that was my favorite meal to cook. What's, Why what's is there a question that way? wasn't even there? Uh, I, I like to cook breakfast. Uh, what is my and favorite meal? So. What's Justin's favorite meal you cook? So she needed to read that. Okay, okay. That makes sense now. Um, I don't know. She cooks us a lot of different things. Um, variety. Variety of stuff. She cooks goulash that she got from her mama. That's always good. Meatloaf and mashed potatoes is always favorite. good. Uh, she cooks good chicken noodle soup. That's always good. Got that good. recipe from my mama. The only problem with the soup, she cooks a lot of good soups. We had potato soup last night. It was good. I know where you this is can't going. eat soup in Alabama in the summertime. <laughs> I, I jump the gun on soup all the time. Hot, man. Uh, soup and chili. She cooks good both of those, but we'll it's have just... chili later this week. Well, it's cooled off a little bit. I've got the air conditioning on. <laughs> It'll just make it really cold in the house and then he'll eat the soup. How long did y'all date before you realized he was the one? Oh, this is a question for you. Well, you're going to answer it, too, because I want to know your answer. Uh, I don't know. That's hard so because I we were so said young. It first. So it was pretty early on for me. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess you. I knew she was special early. Yeah. Um, as I ran from her. Uh, but I think we even, were young. I mean, yeah. we were, we were. But I think even at a young age, like, I think we. It's we just dated different for when you five know, and a half yeah. years. It's different when you know that you're, you feel like you're supposed to be together, I guess. We were young, so it's hard to be like, oh, I knew that he was the one when I was in seventh grade, you know? You sent a lot of letters. <laughs> I knew he was the one. <laughs> and we were engaged, like, during my senior year of high school. So, obviously, we, we figured it out. Five years. We figured it out pretty quick. <laughs> Fifteen years married. We will always be figuring it out. Uh... Yeah, I mean, am I even really sure now? <laughs> What's your He's favorite joking. date night place to go? Uh, I, I don't really know, but we the last two times we've kind of done this, we, we found two pretty good little places mm -hmm. in Coleman. That we didn't know were there. Um, That's always kind of fun is just to go find somewhere yeah. new. Like, even though... We have lived in Coleman all of our life. There are well, new places. I mean, there are new places are new popping places. up. But then there um, are places that have been there for a while that were like, well, we've never been there before. I guess you get in the habit of doing the same things and you don't go try new places. So date nights are a fun time to go try yeah. new places. Yeah. You guys want more children? How long have you been together? What's your favorite thing about each other? My answer is always going to be. Do you I want, more, want children. more children? My answer will always be yes. Yeah. That's just, I well, and I think it's because I feel so called to be a wife and a mama, and I love it so much. Even on the toughest of tough days, I'd be like, yeah, give me more. Give me more kids. I will say, though, and like when it comes to. We're getting old. <laughs> well, when it comes to, I guess, family planning or family I'm size. I'm closer to 40 than I am to 30 now. Don't remind me. She I'm right behind you. trade me I'm in. Right, no. <laughs> but I think my conviction on that has always been to just that if you seek God's plan for your family, he'll, he'll share his plan with you. Because there was a time when I felt like he was saying, I have more kids for you. And it was hard because at the time we we weren't getting pregnant, but I felt like we were supposed to have more kids. And now looking back, he gave us more kids. And I think maybe he's bringing me to a place where it's like. Sarah over here is going to be having a baby when she's 99. Well, no, I think he's bringing me to a place now where maybe this is our family size. You know, maybe this is what he has for us. 
But if he wants to give me some more, I'll take him. <laughs> How long have you been together? 15 years, going on 16 years, about 15 and married. a half years married now. And then... Uh, I'll Pushing just count 20 it, years. Well, I'll just count it by your grades because I can't, like, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 5 years dating. So, so 20, 20, years. 20 years. Over half our lives. What's your favorite thing about each other? <sighs> I don't know. I like me a lot. <laughs> I like I like him a lot too. Uh, I don't know. I, he has that same humor, that same sense of what we were talking about with Easton, where he doesn't have to try. This is where he gets it from, and I love that about him. Um, I I guess I don't know what my favorite thing about you is because I like so much about you. He's, he's getting brownie points over here. No. See, she, she's... God has blinded her to the way I look, the way I act, and the way I sound. And He's put a film over her eyes, and she sees somebody completely different than y'all do. Uh, that's the only reason she loves me as much as she does. God has blinded her to who I am. Uh, I don't know. She's, she's a good dude. You're a pretty good dude. Thanks. Uh, I don't Who know. People it? people always say we're weird. Uh, in, I, I got a buddy. I'm not going to name his name. but um, and He's not married. Um, he's still a young guy. He's younger than I am. And uh, he says, you know, I've always been scared of, of marriage because it you know, hearing other these people talk about it, and then he says, "Well, then I hear you talk about it, and it don't sound so bad." Um, and it is kind of weird. You get out in public and hear how people talk about being married and stuff. And, That's um, never been the case for us. I've never felt that way. I've never felt like, no, "Oh, I'm married." I've never felt that marriage was a burden. No. Um, and we were married young, and I don't feel like I missed out on anything. I mean, I was 18 years old. No, I don't think we missed out on anything. And that may go back to, to we. I've never really felt the pull to be a partier or a, a, a womanizer or anything down them roads. And, and maybe that's just um, from being saved at a young age and kind of living that out. Uh, do you have a name for the new baby? Oh, boy. <sighs> uh, no. Why is it so hard to name this kid? <sighs> You know, we ha did. I thought we had kind of thought we had one, and then we kind of moved away from that. What was that one? Well, it must not have been that good because it didn't <laughs> stick with us. Oh me! Uh, well, I was pretty set on Micah at first. Yeah, we liked Micah, but now that was I just one. don't. I don't. I we had a, we had one that didn't like Micah. Um, we we got one that. Wants to name it Richard. We don't really care much for Richard. And he doesn't understand why. And we he doesn't like understand Richard. why. Uh, That's not that I don't like Richard. It's just not. We got one that thinks some of these names are dog names. Um, Maybe so, we just don't know, tell at, the at kids. At some point, the kids are just going to have to be let out of this conversation. <laughs> we just don't tell the kids what the baby's name uh, is. I don't know. We, we were talking. But that's not even we either. Like, there's names they like. We just. We were talking to today. Uh, I sent some to, well, I just got out of them questions and left. Um, we we were talking today. I sent some to her. Um, Theodore, but call him Theo. Um, Corbin. Oops. Um, what was some of the other ones? Uh, Fletcher. His nickname could be Fletch. Um I liked I, Holden, but now he doesn't really care for that. Yeah, I, I kind of liked Holden at first, and then I said it for a while, and uh, I don't like it as much as I did. I, I, I don't... Uh, Lawson, that was another Lawson, one. Lawson, but then she brought up, and we did Lawson, and we'd have three boys with Olin as the last name, and then yeah, at the Wyatt end of the name, would be left Wyatt would out. Be the only one that was I mean, his first name is Harlan, yeah. but... Um, and it's, I it's mean, still that's not, not that big Owen. deal, but... 
But uh, Lawson is, is I, I like Theodore and uh, Fletcher better than Lawson. It's another video we should do reacting to some of the names that they've suggested. Yeah. I have a, I have a big list. I guess when I did names that we like, might be using, you know, we still don't know what we're using. Several of y'all suggested names. We should go through those sometime. So, the answer to that question yeah. is no. We got a middle name. Yeah. And a last name. Yeah. So, I guess we got a name. Worse comes worse. <laughs> um, where do you hope to see? Where Where do you hope to see yourselves in five years? Where do you hope to be in five years? You know, that was one of those. I don't think about that much anymore. There, I I used to. I used to think, you know, in ten years we could be here doing this. Five years this. I don't think about that much anymore. Maybe that's just being content where I'm at. But I, I guess I think sometimes about where the. You know, the kids, the ages they'll be in five, ten years and what that might look like. Or, you know, if God will call him to pastor a church, if they, you know, our life might change in ways like that. But, right. I don't know. I don't think about that much. Yeah. Or, you know, what it might be like around our home in five years. I guess I do think about it, it a little bit. It will still be loud. It will still be loud. <laughs> uh, and in five years, you'll have four boys over five years. So, it will probably be Real broken loud. walls and really loud. More broken blinds. Yeah, a lot of broken stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you know, the Bible talks about you should say, you know, Lord willing, and and uh, so you know, we'll just, you know, Lord willing, we'll, we'll be happy and healthy, and wherever He has us, we'll be in five years, and you know that kind of brought to mind a, another verse that you they somebody asked earlier about our verses we live by, and then you said can. Contentment. Paul talks about uh, learning how to be abased and how to abound in, in all things. You know, being satisfied with what you have in Jesus. Uh, that's another good one to live your life by. You all know about aliens. What? Tell them where theory this, on aliens. Where did this right, come so from? It's, it's, a, it's biblical. It's not really biblical, but it is kind of Bible based. Um, so, aliens. I want to talk to you about aliens. Oh gosh! Yeah, and dinosaurs. People were dinosaurs. Job <laughs> talks about dinosaurs. Actually, God tells Job about dinosaurs. Y'all get you a drink. It's the, already the, been an hour long. The behemoth. About to go another hour. The behemoth and the leviathan. Actually, the leviathan. One of them, I think it's the leviathan, actually breathes fire. It says his breath is like ash. So it's a dragon. Yeah, the Bible says that. And then the behemoth has a has a neck. Um, and a tail like a cedar tree. So it's a bronchiosaurus. So it's a dinosaur. It can drink up the rivers. That one. Um, yes, the behemoth. So uh, that's dinosaurs. Aliens. Let me tell you about aliens. <laughs> Let me tell you what I think about aliens. After hearing people talk about this them. Subscriber care. I see it. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> no, they're going to like this. You can put this on a separate video. You may want to make this a video by itself. So aliens. So what, how do Christians deal with, with, the, with the thoughts of aliens? Uh, because, I mean, the aliens confuse some people. You know, how do you describe this stuff? You, you hear some of these people that have these encounters that, that really, really sound like they've seen something, right? So, so if we go on, on a biblical basis here, how is, how is this church age? So we're in the age of the church. We're in the age of grace, Right? So how does the Bible tell us this church age is going to end? That we are going to be called up, or the root from the Greek word is where we get the word rapture. So we are going to be, the church is going to be called up into the sky to meet Jesus when he comes back to get his church. Thus ending the church age and allowing, this may start a whole other discussion. And from what I understand and from what I believe the Bible says, allowing the Antichrist to come to power after the church is gone. The Antichrist may actually be on the earth today. The only reason he can't come to power is because the church is still here. So once Christ comes and calls the church home, then he can run amok. That's the only thing holding... I'm getting there. So the rapture, right? The rapture. So after the rapture, the whole, this idea of a one world government is going to come into play. A one world currency, a one world this, a, you know, the chip in the hand and, or in the forehead and numbers and all this other stuff. 
So what would be the easiest way for them to convince people that they need to come together as a one world government? An extraterrestrial threat. How are they going to explain all the Christian population gone like that? Aliens got them. So, what do I think these people are seeing? I think the seed of extraterrestrial life is being, planted. is being planted by the devil. I think these people are seeing things. I think but they're they, seeing demons. Okay, okay. So, the Bible this. talks about principalities and powers. It, it is very clear that there is another dimension that we do not see. Or we do not always see the powers and the principalities and the battle that is going on between good and evil right now that we do not see. Um, so, so you're saying it's a seed that's being planted so that the rapture can be explained away. Exactly. Okay. Because they're going to explain it away with extraterrestrial life. They are going to scare everybody into falling into a one world government and coming under the, the scope of then the Antichrist can come in and take over that what one world What in the government. world had got you thinking about that? I don't really know. <laughs> that was free. I don't, we won't charge you for that. That's my thoughts on it anyway. Who knows? God knows. Aliens. I didn't know we were. I didn't know we were going there, but we did. And dinosaurs. And dinosaurs. Read Job. It talks about a unicorn. It uses the word unicorn. Now I will say our English language does not translate, translate exactly from the Greek that was translated exactly from the Hebrew. So um, we are. We, our language is much dumber than others um so i mean we use love to talk about loving our spouse and loving a hamburger so but you know it that may... hamburger i had tonight was pretty good <laughs> well, i hope you don't love it as much as me i love you more baby but it does say unicorn you don't believe me go read the 39th and 40th chapter of job God's pretty proud of the horse, too. I think we're going to get in trouble for miniaturizing some of these things. Why'd y'all have to go and ruin it? He's proud of the horse. I mean, he listed up there with unicorns and dinosaurs. That's impressive. And then we make miniature ponies. That's what humans do. What have we done? We are... What time is it? We're talking about unicorns and aliens. <laughs> well, I don't say aliens in the Bible. It says unicorns. I know Look it, it up. Does. I know it does. Look it up. Look it up. 39th, 40th chapter of Job. Maybe the 41st, too. God's putting Job back in his place. He lists unicorns and horses and dinosaurs and dragons. Bink, bink. Love you. I love you. We had a fun date night. We enjoyed spending some time with y'all, answering your questions. Maybe you found out a little bit more about us. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye, y'all.